Welcome to the AI Chat Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Today on the podcast, we have the pleasure of being joined with Bob Wilhelm, who is a partner at CINT, a leading company in digital solutions where he plays a pivotal role in driving the organization's growth and nurturing its talent with a focus on modern management models and collaborative culture. He's been instrumental in their adaptation and thriving in the dynamic digital landscape. He's an AI enthusiast, and Bob brings valuable insights into data-driven strategies and AI implementation in the business world. In addition, I am holding a copy of his book, which is called Orchestration. We're excited to dive into all of this today on the podcast. Welcome to the show today, Bob. Uh, thank you so much, Aiden, and uh, I'm so happy I'm already finished. I, I, everything that you said about me, it's so... So honored to have uh, to be here with you today. Well, that is fantastic to hear. I'm wondering if you could, um, for the listeners, if you could give everyone a little bit of your background and your journey. What brought you to to doing what you're doing today? Tell us a little bit about your journey. All right, all right. It, it's it's a long journey, uh, but uh, let me give you a, a quick summary. I just moved to the U.S. a year and a half ago, uh, working uh, with a company called CINT. It's a technology company. It's a company that is implementing AI solutions to lots of big clients like the Coca Colas, the J and Js of the world. Um, and uh, I, I run two areas at the company, uh, basically the people area and the communications area, the lead generation area. Uh, and we are facing the, the transformation, the huge transformation that AI is bringing to the world. So in some cases, we are you know, helping our clients to face their own transformation, uh, either the opportunities on you know, uh, being more effective and efficient, and on the other side, on exploring like the opportunity of creating experiences that are much, 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 much better than uh, what we used to be able to do before AI. And also, uh, I've been studying, and that's why uh, you showed the book. You know, uh, this uh, post-pandemic world where you know everyone was kind of not really invited, but we were kind of forced to rethink our relationship with our work, right? Plus, the AI revolution that we're living right now made an invitation for us to rethink what work is, was what leadership is, and that's why that's when the book comes out. You know, I think there's a new breed of leaders, the orchestrators, being born for this complex AI uh, world. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think you're spot on there. There's so many unique challenges we're facing today. I'm wondering, could you tell us a little bit of uh, like give people a, a summary of the concept of your book and how it kind of plays into some of the shifts that we're seeing in the AI from AI in the landscape today. All right. Good, good, good. Uh, so I think orchestration, you know, I, I organize it into. Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. A Netflix original film. The Wi-Fi is working. In the event of a global communications breakdown, do the following. Stay inside. What just happened here is happening everywhere. Avoid strangers. We've all been deserted. I don't trust them. And most importantly, do not panic. <laughs> Julia Roberts. What happens next? Mahershala Ali. I knew something was coming. Leave the world behind. Rated R. Now playing only on Netflix. Big three mindset shifts. You know, the first one is is uh, coming uh, from the me to more of a we mindset, right? A, a, a little bit less of a I do, I have a team, I have, you know, an idea, I have a conviction to to the we collectively building stuff. The second point is like coming from less directing stuff and more courier or grasping stuff and people. And that connects with the complex world uh, and the AI world. You know, you are also, you know, leaders will be choreographing also AI agents, not only humans, right? So yeah. it, it's becoming much, much more complex. complex. And the third uh big driver change is coming from what is known as the purpose of a company 
to more of a personal meaning. I think a pandemic made that invitation that we all want to have a personal meaning that can be uh, summed up in, in a company that we participate. But it's not like we're not crazy about joining a company's purpose. There's something out there far from the reality, sometimes not even being walks the talk. Um, and so this is, this is what, you know, with this big th mindset shifts, you know, I've organized a few, uh, drivers that made an orchestrator, an orchestrator, right? So from receptive listener to be considerate, to be detached, to unleash people's meaning, unlocks people's potential, be a resource and spark autonomies. These are the seven drivers of an orchestrator that, you know, becomes much more of a, of a conductor in managing organizations and companies than a boss, even an inspiring leader. It's much more of mm -hmm. like making sure that everyone has, you know, can play their best instrument, but, you know, and they are all aligned and orchestrated and choreographed together. I love that. Yeah, I think there's so many unique uh there's so many unique aspects of what's happening today. And uh, that's kind of what struck me about orchestration. There's there's some incredible takeaways inside the book on that. Something else I would love to ask you about is how does CINT approach the, the challenge of sourcing and prepping data for AI applications today? Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a long and, and maybe profound uh, question or answer. Um, I, I think, I think I would start from the humane part of it. We're trying to never forget. And, and we believe that not necessarily technology is made for good, but we believe that we should make it for good. Right. Mm -hmm. So, so ethics and biases, all that stuff, we're making sure that we're paying attention and, and being very conscious on the way we do everything. Obviously, we have to follow all the, you know, uh, legal requirements because we work with uh, big enterprise companies, global companies. Um, but at the same time, I think the third aspect maybe to, to your question is like, we're trying to, besides those things, never block creativity, right? Mm. So... And, and I think there's something that people are, you know, the, the, the whole data, it's, it's, a, it's a mindset of uh, organizing and learning and, you know, being pragmatic, etc. But with AI, you can add creativity, right? Because uh, a data-driven mindset, it's, it's basically a, a mindset of looking at the mirror. Right. So everything that, you know, you can organize, you can learn a lot. You can you can do amazing stuff with that. But with AI, you can combine the creative aspects of all of that and kind of create the future. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think to summarize it all, I think it's an open mind mindset that we're trying to bring, uh, not be over pragmatic, over engineering driven but also mm -hmm. creativity and innovation driven uh, in, in, in our approach to, to everything that we're doing among data and AI. Okay. Yeah. I love that. And I should have done this at the beginning, but I'm wondering, would you be able to give just like a, a quick blurb or summary on what exactly CINT does for the listener? Yes. Yes. Uh, CINT is, is a technology company. We, we help the transformation of incumbent uh, big corporations like the Coca Colas, the J and Js, you know, big you know financial institutions of the world, uh, into their digital space, and more recently into their AI space. That that by definition, there is no AI space itself. AI is a mean, right? So, but into their you know hyper efficient you know, yep. world of you know producing technology in a way that was never possible and also hyper experimentation. So creating experiences for their customers in a way they never had before. Right. So that's basically yeah. what we do. Um, we are six 
thousand people around the world, originally from Brazil, but you know, big presence here in the U.S., big presence in Europe and Asia too, uh, and helping uh, those big corporations to to reinvent themselves. Uh, once every company is a technology company nowadays, right? So, yeah. uh, and every company will be not not saying it will be a company that will develop things on AI, but will be an AI driven company. I, I don't see any other way. Right, yeah. because things either, either on the production side or the factory side will be AI driven. On the management side, they are already AI driven, right? And on the marketing side, even more. So every company will be somehow AI powered, let's say. Uh, and so that's what we are helping, you know, our our clients to do. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, you're so right. Everyone will have to be an AI driven company or else, of course, their competitors will be able to outperform them with increased efficiency. But what I would love to ask you about is, you know, like in in working on this, what are some of the biggest challenges that you have in helping companies perhaps come up with their AI strategies or implement AI or, or kind of bring it in? What, what's some of the biggest challenges you face while doing that? Yeah, that's a very good question. And, you know, uh, and my answer is uh, I, I had a, 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 someone asking me that question about what was my personal biggest challenge or fear, right? Yeah. And the answer was myself. <laughs> and and I, I think the answer for to your question is, is the people, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, there's no technology barrier. You know, everything that is, you know, we talked before about, you know, uh, compliance and legal, you know, and ethics should be taken care of naturally. But these are not the blocks. The blocks are us. Right, mm -hmm. because we think that we will be replaced, or we think this is not good enough, or you know, and sometimes some people are seeing AI as an oracle. It's not. It's an assist. Mm -hmm. It's a bunch of um, a huge amount of assistant assistance that can make our lives so much better, right? Mm -hmm. But if we put AI as an oracle that knows everything, that's a that's the wrong way of seeing the whole thing. Right. So I think for ourselves, for our clients, the bigger challenge is on the people. The more we make people understand and feel good about it, you know, the, the smoother the whole thing will happen. Right. So, and I think conversations like this, they help people say, oh, so it, it's not that it's not complicated or complex. It is, but you know, at the end of the day, if we embrace the unknown, we will be able to, you know, unblock our organization to move forward and live instead of living with fear, living with excitement of what everything that everything breaks, right? And there's an there's an invitation. If we jump into from fear to excitement, we more people can be co builders of the future and we avoid the potential negative aspects that, you know, all this can bring to the world, right? The more yeah. people are excited about bringing, in, uh, building a, an AI infrastructure with ethics, with, you know, all the compliance necessities, you know, legal necessities, the more this will transform the world into a better place. Uh, and the more people, you know, are willing to do that, the better for all of us. Yeah. I, 100%. I, uh, I got to agree with you there. And on that topic, like, cause I love that the framing that you use there of like, you know, be excited. There's so much that we can do. And if we do that, we can all become co-creators in the space. What I would love to ask you about specifically is for you, what are what's most exciting for you? You know, like when you look at AI and how it is going to evolve in the next, let's say, five years, particularly in the realm of like business and digital solutions and everything you're working on. What are you most excited about in this, you know, this transformation we're seeing? This episode is brought to you by Klaviyo, the platform that powers smarter digital relationships. With Klaviyo, you can activate all your customer data in real time, connect seamlessly with your customers across all channels, guide your marketing strategy with AI-powered insights, recommendations, and automated assistance, deliver experiences that feel individually designed at scale, and grow your business faster. Power smarter digital relationships with Clavio. Learn more at clavio.com slash Spotify. That's K L A V I Y O.com slash Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Shopify. 
That's the sound of switching your business to Shopify, the global commerce platform that supercharges your selling. Harness the best converting checkout and same intuitive features, trusted apps, and powerful analytics used by the world's leading brands. Stop leaving sales on the table. Discover why millions trust Shopify to build, grow, and run their business. Sign up today for your $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash tech23. Ah, uh, that's a that's a good question. I'm, I'm I consider myself a creative person, so I think what really excites me is the possibility of rebuilding everything from scratch with very different. Yeah. It's not an evolutionary thing. I love the evolutionary thing, but you know, but this is a kind of a uh, and this word is so much used, became so much of a buzzword, like this disruption, right? So it's mm-hmm. um, let maybe we can find a better word, but you know. Uh, what really excites me is that AI is giving us a blank page. Yeah. Right? It's not like just like you do this this thing 10% better, 20% better, very incremental. It's like you can do absolutely different. Right? And the beautiful thing is that with AI, you can do a little piece of something and tasks. You don't need to do the whole infrastructure or the whole system or the whole marketing strategy or anything. You know, you can do a little piece. You can say, oh, let's do, let's do a, let's pick a little, you know, marketing, for instance. You can do just the creative of, you know, your films using AI. You don't need to do all the process. It doesn't need to be automated. It doesn't need to be everything at the same time. And you will yeah. feel huge you know, 200%, 300%, 500%, 1,000% better results by doing just a little piece, right? With other technologies in the past, you have to rebuild. Imagine like if you go from uh, 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 traditional systems and moving to the cloud. That's like three years project. You know, you have all the difficulties and and the challenges of changing that into an organization. And maybe it's three years later, you see amazing results. And in the process, mm-hmm. you see some results, but they take a long time to happen. With AI, you can get, let's say you are an airline company and you have a pricing t- challenge. You can just plug an AI module to the pricing system. You don't need to redo the whole pricing software and yeah. increase your results by 100, 200, 500,000 percent with that little module. And this is so beautiful because you have, you know, not only one blank page, but a lot of small blank pages to work and to be creative and to innovate. Yeah, I I love that. I mean, it's so incredible, everything that's happening. I can obviously see your excitement for the, the space and everything going on, shining through. One thing that I've heard a lot of companies talk about that they struggle with is, um, or, or even employees within companies, especially when you have these big, huge shifts. Um, is kind of the cultural piece. How does, so like from your end, how does CINT have like really foster a culture that supports innovation and experimentation in AI? Right. I, I think um, it's a, we've done that before through the digital revolution. We started 29 years ago doing traditional software, right? Waterfall, you know, very traditional way of developing software. And we moved to lean and uh, agile. Uh, obviously, those changes were slower than what we're living now. But um, I think I think two two things, maybe two words that come to my mind. Uh, the first one is always to be humble. It, it's like success is a problem. You can't you can't think that you are s- succeeding in something that you be, start to become blind. Right. Mm-hmm. And and the second thing, second word maybe is is we try to, you know, uh talk a lot about that and, and make sure that people understand that that, you know, change is inevitable and it's always, always happen. So never never aim for comfort or stability. Th- that thing doesn't exist. Right. So mm-hmm. most of the cultures that are, you know, very against innovation and change is because they try to be stable and you know to 
you know, try to sell to their people that this is the way it works, this is the way that you will continue to work and, you know, kind of so show some stability, which humans like. Mm -hmm. and, but we're trying at CIT to say, hey, let's understand that the change is inevitable. It will always happen. It's happening a little bit faster now. But and we we embrace change as part of our culture. I think that's uh, it, it's a little bit theoretical. It's not easy to not so easy to implement, but uh, it's been very successful for us. So they it, instead of moving into fear, we easily move our most of our people into excitement when there's news uh, out there, right? Obviously, AI is a little bit like more radical and <laughs> more yeah more intense um but uh the the invitation we do all the time is uh uh move from fear to excitement uh and and be grateful for the privilege of being alive this time of the world right so with so many things changing for better in such a nice way um uh, imagine you know i my father uh he was in the glass industry for 40 years and everything that happened in the glass industry, you know, uh, production of glass during his career was incremental. There, there was, you know, obviously when he started and when he been retired, you know, glass was done in a much better way, you know, cheaper, more efficient, etc. Et but not with any disruption. And we are living, you know, in a moment that it's all about being reinvented. And mm -hmm. the moment you you have gratitude about that, the excitement starts to come, say, instead of the fear. Yeah. Because you say, okay, there's so many unknown things, maybe I can go build some of the answers instead of wait for the answer, right? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I think that's uh, such an important mindset shift. And as you really use that framing, I think it uh, it sets you up for success. So it's it's incredible to see you guys are actively implementing that in your your company and your culture. Um, Bob, as we look at wrapping up this interview, I would love to ask you uh, one last question, and that would be, based off of everything that you're seeing, what advice would you give to uh, professionals or corporations actively looking? Um, at you know implementing AI or working on some of these developments um, or maybe some advice you could give that comes out of your book orchestration what's what's a piece of advice you feel like you could give some of these people right Let, let's try to to combine those two you know advices quickly and I, I think starting with the orchestration you know I think it's uh there's a, a, a big thing that I, I I'm provoking leaders as myself to you know detach a little bit you know don't be so much attached to to what you know, to your success, to your concepts, to your beliefs. And on the AI, my invitation is like, do test little things. You know, use everything that comes to your mind, that comes to your you know uh, knowledge, and do it small little tests. You know, with your kids, with you, something that you're writing with something that you're reading. Uh, there's so many amazing tools that you can kind of secretly, <laughs> if you are if you are around fear and you say, people, some people, when people start using the expression, when I was young, when I was, you know, if you were there, you just like, and, and young people you are using that too. It's amazing. Like 30 years old people that say, oh, when I was at college, you know, um, because they're moved by fear, is that a good way to get moved from that to the excitement is just do little, single, simple tests. You know, if you're writing a note, the other day I was chatting with my, my boss, the founder of CINT, the CEO, Caesar. I was in the plane, I was chatting back and forth with him about something. In a certain moment, I said, you know, maybe this is getting a little bit too hot you know in, in the sense of like uh the energy was high and i i anonymized everything took all the names out and had a quick chat with chat dpt as simple as that in the plane and said chat dpt what are the emotions of this text 
what this text is bringing to a potential reader of this text uh, mm -hmm. is it too aggressive is it is it nice would i would i sound as building something or an invitation for building or am i destroying something and the results were amazing you know the answers were like yeah this sounds very constructive but there's this little phrase that is very aggressive i don't mm -hmm. know i don't know why you're using that and then i rephrased and checked it again so it was really as i was talking to you Jaden, and say hey what do you think about this message and and it was such a this is so a simple example, but if if you do a little bit that, you know, without showing to anyone, you're gonna experience the power behind these things, and then you become in love with that. I think that I, I, I hands. Yeah, I love that. That's incredible advice, and that's a great example because you know ChatGPT or other AI tools. It's just an awesome opportunity to use something with no you know, like emotional attachment to an issue, right? Sometimes when we work on deals or renegotiate things, yeah, we're like attached to it. We want it to be this way or that way. But you give it to that, it's just going to tell you like that, you know, it's flat out computer generated. This is aggressive. This is nice. This is whatever. So I love that. Um, To the listener, thank you so much for tuning into the podcast today. Make sure to go and get a copy of um, Bob's book. Orchestration is a phenomenal book. Um, is great listening to you chat about this. I'll leave a link in the description in the show notes for people that are interested in getting that. They can go uh, find this. And um, once again, thanks so much for coming on the show. To the listener, make sure to rate us wherever you get your podcasts. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day.